Sixers fans, welcome back. Uh, are these the final hours of Ben Simmons in the city of Philadelphia? I don't know. Let's get into it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the family. I am live streaming, watch party the entire draft tonight because it's my favorite time of the year. There will be, there. I, I, I shut down everything in my life to be here tonight with you guys watching the NBA draft. Uh, make sure you stop by, say what's up. It's been a while since I've streamed since you know the Sixers disappointed again in the playoffs. Nice. I'm going down a, a very sad, sad, sad trail right now. Let's get back into it. Um, I don't think it's a matter of if anymore with Ben Simmons in Philadelphia. I think it's a matter of when. And I'm starting to believe that maybe the Sixers are just set surefire on um, trading Ben Simmons tonight at the NBA draft. And there are different directions I think I can take this video. And I am doing this on the fly. And I think for one... I could take this video down to the stereotypical, let's bash on Ben Simmons, let's talk about all the things that he could have done better, and all of the things that just I wish he did to make him a better player, to, to make the team better, and to just let the team finally reach its potential that it, it's had for the past years. But instead, I think I, I want to appreciate Ben Simmons. Um, I have been one of his biggest supporters over the years, and though this past postseason I've said, I made a video that my nephews constantly bring up and say, um, you said that you hope to never see Ben Simmons in a Sixers jersey again. I did. I did say that. And that hasn't changed. But that's not out of spite. That's not out of um, a hate. That's not out of, you know, me hoping that he never is good. It's just me out of accepting when a relationship is just, it's not working anymore. And I think Ben Simmons and the Sixers have, have mutually um, come to terms with the fact that it's just not going to work in Philadelphia. And for so many different reasons, that hurts. I think for one, it just hurts because I was with Ben Simmons watching his games on LSU or on ESPN when he was at LSU in college. I, I have loved him from before that man put on my favorite team's jersey. And then in the summer league, when I think he <laughs> arguably was the best offensive player in his career during a summer league at the age of 19 years old, there's just so much promise to him, and there still is so much promise. And then it came to the point where Ben Simmons really started to turn it up defensively, and he became this defensive nightmare. He was just an absolute monster on that end of the court, and he's only improved by on that every single year, and you have to give him credit for that. Though he hasn't improved offensively, and maybe there's an argument to say he's declined offensively, that man has put a lot of effort in on, on the defensive end, and I think he just is really good on that end because of how confident he is, and that's what it boils down to. It, it, it all boils down to the lack of confidence that Ben Simmons um, really has. And it's tough, man. It, it's tough to watch people in a spotlight really just struggle mentally because it's at a point it's impossible to not hear what people are saying. And a lot of casual fans and a lot of just us fans in general – are very quick, especially in the, city of, in the city of Philadelphia, are very quick to bash and hate and talk smack on an NBA player. And it's got to be hard for a guy to be able to just toughen through that. And so many of you people um, are like, oh, dude, you get paid $180 million. Like, just don't listen to it. Just don't listen to it. Just keep doing your thing. Like, dude, why you got to listen to people like that? Like, dude, dude, it's so much easier said than done. I, I mean... It's hard to be able to, to, to be vulnerable and put out your entire craft for the world to see. And one of the biggest spotlights in the world, I mean, Ben Simmons has become a, a, a famous meme, you know, and that's so difficult for your mental. I think at a point, it, it's, it's almost impossible for you not to let it get to you. And you see it a lot. You see it happen a lot to people in the NBA. And, and Ben Simmons got really, really hit hard with it. So I just, for the sake of Ben, I really hope he, he figures it out. He really figures it out, but I just don't think it's going to be in the city of Philadelphia. And that being said, um, I think tonight might be the final night that Ben's in Philadelphia. I have been so um, seesaw on this. I a Part of me thinks that if there's not a move done tonight, that the Sixers are just going to hold on to Ben Simmons. A part of me thinks that there's going to be a deal tonight done. And then a part of me thinks there's going to be a deal done in free agency during a sign-and-trade type of uh, deal. So yet again, I have absolutely no idea. I am on the on the fence and, and as clueless as you guys are about this, and I think everyone else is about this. Um, but there's just been so much in the news lately. The Sixers uh, traded for the 53rd pick last night, and obviously that's not because we want to go draft a dude at 53. It's, it's all about just gaining assets and just gaining more things that we could possibly make a trade with. And I, I just think that obviously is, is what 
the the end goal there is for trading for that pick and I think Philadelphia is is very um, motivated to get Ben Simmons out sooner rather than later I think and I I think that because you have seen it in the in in articles and in the news and in the media so much and you see the Sixers getting so much hate because obviously they're over asking for everything but you got to understand that's that's how negotiating works. You're not going to go to a car dealership and immediately take what the, the they're saying the car is going to be for. Like if this car is fourteen thousand dollars, you're not going to go. I don't know why I picked that number. I could have just said ten thousand dollars, but I chose fourteen. If you go to a car dealership and they're like, "Oh, it's fourteen thousand dollars," you're not just going to show up with fourteen thousand dollars cash and slap it onto the um, counter and walk out with the car. And then when you're in the car driving home, you find out it was only supposed to be five thousand dollars. It's yeah, you don't do that. You do your research before and you try and bargain. So you go there and be like, "Um, twenty five hundred," and they'll be like, mm, "We'll settle for five thousand." That's how negotiating works. You overprice to begin with for a return, and then you find a middle ground. So neither team gets hit too hard. That's just how it works. Daryl Morey knows what he's doing. He knows he's not going to get the entire Toronto Raptors roster and the number four pick for Ben Simmons. He's very well aware of that. But you have to poach the market. You have to ask around. You have to... Do that type of work to get a deal done that is going to make your team better. And I don't think it's crazy to have a, a borderline Harden type return. And I'm not saying seven first round picks like what came out of the news yesterday, because to me and to everyone else, that's completely asinine. I mean, that is legitimately crazy. That's not going to happen. No duh. But I think there is a chance that there's going to be a young player and a couple of firsts. I, 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 I don't see why not. I mean, if the trade was OG Ananobi, maybe another player, and two first-round picks, I, that doesn't shock me. That really doesn't shock me. I think Ben Simmons' talent is, is very impressive, and I think he is a, a very good player who can in, 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 evolve into an even bigger star. For that reason alone, the hall is going to be there. And even if Ben Simmons never improves, he is still a top-five defender in the NBA with... Um, a very, very high NBA IQ and a very elite ability to pass the ball. Though, I mean, he's an okay interior scorer when he decides to go into the interior. But he just can't shoot, and I know that's a huge thing, but a lot of teams can really really utilize that better than Philadelphia has because of just Embiid, and the fifth's just not going to be there. It will never be there. Simmons is not a point guard. He is much more similar to a Draymond Green type than a, a Cade Cunningham at the one. It's just... It's just not that, you know, he's just not a point guard. It's because he cannot shoot and you just, you can be a very good screener. And I think for a team like Portland that could have Damian Lillard and Ben Simmons, I mean, I just think that's a fantastic duo. Portland could really take a lot of notes to see that Steph and Clay, uh, I mean, Steph and Draymond Green pick and roll and just utilize it in the same way in Portland. And I think it could be even better, arguably, maybe, I don't know. Um, but there is... There is a lot to say about Ben Simmons' talent, and I think there can be a lot in return for it. And obviously, Maury is over-asking right now because that's just the way of the land. That's just how the NBA works. But what team I think he goes to, I have like nine teams in my head where I could realistically see him playing next year, ranging from Sacramento to Cleveland to Miami, even though Miami would be the worst fit for Ben Simmons. I mean... I heard that Miami was interested, and if Miami pulls a deal where, let's say, it's like a sign and trade of like Duncan Robinson, Kendrick Nunn, and Goran Dragic, maybe Tyler Hero, and a first, if that, for Ben Simmons, I just don't understand that from Miami's standpoint. Not only do I think that is a lot to give up, but Bam Adebayo and Ben Simmons are probably the two last players that should ever play together because they will only make each other worse. I mean, they are legitimately the same thing. I don't understand that at all from a Miami standpoint, unless they're willing to deal Bam out of IO, in which I don't get it from Philly standpoint because Bam and Embiid just, that's not going to fit either. I think that would fit better than Simmons somehow, but I just don't think it would fit um, at all. And then, I mean, now, just speaking at the top of my head, I wonder if Tobias Harris is gone, you know? I don't think so. I think we hold on to him. I mean, we should hold on to him. He's a good ball player. 
you know. But then, I, I mean, I think Sacramento. I think Sacramento is really interested in dealing Buddy Heald. I think they're really interested in even pushing Bagley out. But I don't think Maury takes a deal from Sacramento if it does not involve either Tyrese Halliburton or or De'Aaron Fox. I, I don't think Sacramento wants to do either. So Sacramento is iffy for me. Um, I think Portland's a possibility. I think a team like Golden State would be interested, but I just don't see that working out. And I don't think Philadelphia wants to move him to Golden State because of just what we would get in return. So I, I don't know. Um, I think Cleveland's possible, but Cleveland is probably not likely to move that number three pick for a guy like Simmons. And I think that Maury would really be interested in like a Sexton and the number three, number three pick in return, just straight up. Maybe with Kevin Love as a contract match, but I mean, Cleveland obviously doesn't, doesn't really use him. So, I mean, I'm sure they've been, they've been trying to get rid of Kevin Love since LeBron left. So, but like, you know, um, so, I mean, I think I, I would like that deal. I think Sexton, the third pick and, and Kevin Love for Ben Simmons would be incredible. I just, I just think that might be too much too, because dude, Ben Simmons is, uh, market value is so hard to pinpoint right now because of all of these rumors of just overpricing and then underpricing. It's just like, what is the middle ground for Ben Simmons? And I think it's really, really difficult. And I, I honestly, I hope he's traded tonight during my, my stream, just so it gets to be a memory with you guys. You know, I really want to, I really want to, uh, witness a Ben Simmons, a big Sixers milestone trade with all of you guys uh, in in the chat and with me tonight. So make sure you come out tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. I am, I I mean, I caught off work. I don't have any classes. I have been busy the past couple of days, like extra busy. Um, that's why I have no videos, just so I can be there tonight for hours among hours. Everyone who's asked to hang out with me tonight, I'm like, no, it is me, my laptop, and my chat. That's all it is. Peace out, guys. Let's see what happens.